All right, you two, welcome back. We're going to be doing another London session market analysis for today. Uh, we're going to include NASDAQ in this one here for you guys. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started on S&P 500 so you guys can see. Um, we were reviewing the past couple days. This is a little bit of a gap. Uh, we had that push down. Uh, we couldn't get above that actual gap area. Uh, so we used that as some resistance to look to short down into the support of about 57 and you could see we came right back up as soon as we started to hold this area as some support it was a key indication here that the market should be climbing to refill that gap there and then test the above but uh, we did notice that if the market couldn't hold above the 90s uh, then we we're going to look to try to collapse back down into 70 uh, four area uh, as of course we probably only I think we only came down to about 76 uh, 50 uh, then we kind of stopped and came right back up into the 80s. So we're going to be probably looking for is the market to play around these areas. Now, if we can't break below these 73, uh, not 73, but maybe about 74 to 76 or 77, uh, we're going to use that as some support to push back up against this resistance. What we do want to take note of is we are still in a long term uptrend. So the momentum is still going to be a bullish momentum. So, I mean, if you're looking to try to fade, uh, just be cognizant. You're going to want to try to do it against uh, resistance areas or prior resistance areas. If you try to do it somewhere in the middle, you might find yourself um, getting chopped up around that area. So I uh, just want to be clear as to what you're trying to do in these markets. Um, I would say, if anything, try to understand what you're trying to accomplish with the trades that you're going to do, what best fits you as far as trading. There will always be a lot of opportunities in markets and because markets move at random most of the time, um, it's better to first be able to identify what you're looking out for first. Um, let the market structure itself or create an actual structure given the price action movement and then from there uh, and an approach in there, right? So if we were to try to take some approaches today during the London session, we're letting the market pull into our zone here between 74 to 77 uh, and we're going to allow the market to create some structured support now if we find that the market is creating a structured support what this would basically be is a opportunity to buy the dip right in this area as we see some rotations to go back long up above right just because we came into the area um, and hit it once doesn't mean that that's going to be a good support area for us to go long yet Right, we need to see the price action confirm the area and then take an opportunity. Same thing with uh, fade trade. If you want to take it, it would be somewhere up here. Uh, you're fading against the bullish momentum and you're allowing the market to show some resistance rotations in that area. And from those resistance rotations, you would then be looking for an opportunity to fade that. Right? There's other things that kind of fall in line, whether it be like using moving averages, using overnight highs, overnight lows. Uh, we'll throw up some studies here so you guys can see, but unhide these studies here and you guys can see that would be like an R1 there, previous day high, point of control is above. All right, if we move into that area, we can potentially try to use that as some qualifiers to look to fade that back down. Right. Another opportunity of trade or approach would be to maybe break out past that R1 to shoot into R2. Right, so I would say S&P 500 may want to gradually try to pull into 3400s given that we're still in a strong bullish momentum there and an uptrend. Right, So you always want to keep the longer picture in mind. Um, never kind of forget that because when you do start to slip away from that and you trade on a smaller term chart and you kind of forget the bigger picture, you find yourself getting chopped up as well. So you want to keep the bigger picture in mind and as the market gradually pulls into these levels, then you can look for an approach to apply and see if the trade plays out the way you want to see it, something you're familiar with. Uh, seasoned traders aren't going to be jumping into markets at every single opportunity market presents. No, they're going to be waiting out for specific things that they're familiar with, right? So I would say if you're a new trader, get familiar with some types of maybe one or two strategies, learn to practice that, become really good at it, uh, find familiarity within other markets, 
see the structure build, see if you can capitalize on that and consistently do those sets of rules or strategies every single time. And you're going to find that uh, your trading is going to become more successful if you can follow a consistent type of strategy. So in S&P 500, we're going to look for a bounce or a couple rotations around this area. If we can get support rotations between 74 to 77, again, we're going to use that as an opportunity to try to gradually pull upward. So we want to keep that bigger term picture in mind bullish trend we'll take a look at a four tick too so we can see what we have as far as like a smaller move but we're gonna look for a bullish opportunity or a couple rotations to buy that dip to go back up now if we see that the market breaks below that support and holds it as resistance then we can also qualify another move lower into the impulses below but you guys can see we highlighted here in this eclipse there where the gap started and we needed to get actual support holding that in order to go back up until then, we actually saw a move going down and took some opportunities between 73 and also 69 for an opportunity up. And then we took some long opportunities on the way up as well. Uh, so let's take a look at the four tick chart, give you guys a better understanding. Now, you also want to keep in mind, we use range bar charts here um, at Trade Pro Academy. Um, and also, you can use... Uh, daily or time frame charts if you want to the daily the weekly the 15 30 minute we also uh, touch up on that as well but our main focus is going to be on the range bar chart so it may be different in terms of if you're looking at a time based chart you may see things a little bit different but i mean it should somewhat be similar but you might see a little bit of a different approach maybe that appears um, but we're just going based off of range bar charts to keep it simple here for you guys, uh, whoever watches this market analysis, uh, this is what we're using and this is kind of how we qualify it. So uh, you guys can see throughout the day you did have a bullish structure forming and you had a lot of um, rotations giving opportunity right between 74 to 77 uh, as an opportunity to the upside. So because the structure broke down, didn't break all the way down right here but came right back up, that is an indication that the market wanted to continue higher. Right, so the opportunities would have came somewhere right in between this area of structured support for a long opportunity upside. And you can see where we have our resistance here right now on the S&P 500, which is right at about, I would say, let me throw a horizontal line up there, see how high we came today. Uh, we went as high as about 33.97.75. So I think at one point we're going to try to press those 3400s given the bullish structure. But again, we're going to want to see the market... Uh, come back down into our levels this first bounce off is not really indicating anything for us want to see some support here uh, and then an opportunity back up now if we start to collapse uh, below this area and then we start to pull up and use this as some resistance uh, then we're definitely probably going to look for a move down into our prior levels below which is going to be the structured at about maybe 57 uh, to 60 that's going to be our structured area below but as of right now, uh, we want to see if we can hold some support and then press up higher into the resistances on S&P 500. That's going to be our idea. And if we don't get something like that, then we'll just kind of stay out of trading until we see something we're familiar with. But again, guys, um, just understand, figure out what you're trying to accomplish. Figure out the trades that best fit you, what you're really good at, and then um, allow the market structure to evolve or create an actual structure that you're able to identify and then look to trade that right so uh, we're going to move over to gold here um, so you guys can see exactly what's going on in the gold market and uh, what we're looking for tonight on the london session so let's take a look again we have some strong uh, resistance that came in over here right around that 1616 or 1615 area and we tried that level uh one two three four times or maybe even a fifth time um, before we came back down so I would say right now again gold is still in a bullish structure too so we're kind of trying to see exactly where the market wants to go from here if you're looking to trade I would say your opportunity is to see if the market can come back in here now if we fail this area right here again then we're probably going to look for some resistance rotations to take it back into the actual impulse the impulse is important here we highlighted it right there in the eclipses this is what created that new high uh, and if you want to understand how you can use impulses to your advantage in markets, definitely come see us here at Trade Pro Academy. We can learn to, we can not learn, but we can uh, take the time out to teach you how you would use this type of impulse and actually where it comes from, um, how the big players are actually using this to their advantage. Um, but 
if it breaks below that impulse, you're going to have some structured support coming between 1607 to as high as maybe a 1609 and as low as maybe about 1606 is going to be your structured support. So down below over here, we're going to wait for some rotations there. If we can get those rotations for support right around this area, then we're definitely going to probably look for some upside movement as well uh, around there. But again, I would say you, your first opportunity is probably see if the market can get back into that resistance at about 15. Um, just note, again, the gold is in a bullish trend, um, which is the upside. So I would say if it's still in that bullish trend, if it comes in, at one point, if it continues in that momentum, it may just break through the 16s. And we got some strong resistance coming in at about 1620. 1619, 1620 would be one of my main levels I'm looking for to actually find that um, fade opportunity to fade that back down. But we're not quite there yet. Want to see how it reacts to these levels. Keeping in mind the longer term picture there um, is in a bullish trend. And we are continuing to make higher highs and higher lows within all this structured movement. So again, at one point, I'm pretty sure gold may want to just try to press through that resistance if we continue to make higher highs and higher lows. Even with slight pullbacks, um, it won't matter because we'd have to crack this area right over here for us to say that it's really going to start to go uh, bearish to the downside to meet some of these levels down below over here. So I want to keep that in mind. Let's take a look at a four tick to see what we got so far. Um, again, same thing, got that resistance up above, and we're kind of right in the middle of this area. We did crack below an impulse, and we're kind of holding this right here. So I would say given the structure right now, we may have an opportunity to collapse back down into the impulses down below over here, uh, which I'm thinking that might be the first move given the actual structure, but we'll see. We have one, we have one, two opportunities that couldn't get back we had a slight I guess, I guess you guys can see this right now we had a slight gap to the upside so in fact we might even look to let's try to throw a lot onto this thing here for you guys we're probably gonna look to try to short this here on gold right to the downside see if we can get that lot filled here and also a lot filled there we'll probably see if we can short that back down Given the structured movement in here, we got one filled. So we're going to look to actually pull this thing down right into this area right here. And the reason behind why we're looking to do that as of right now is because that where this black arrow is, that gap, I like to use gaps, but gapped up couldn't hold that structured uh, support there to pull back into the resistance. So there's a high probability that we move back down. I um, want to see if we can get that opportunity. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our stops just a little bit up above the actual uh, top of that peak and see if we can get that pull back down uh, into these areas. I might even move something down right over here. So we'll see if we can get that uh, put a point on one and looking for an opportunity down 1.5 to the downside. So that's actually what we're looking at on gold to see if we can get that. Uh, let's move over to oil for you guys so you guys can see some of the oil opportunities we may be looking to try to take here. Um, oil is a little bit more choppier. Uh, you guys can see there's we had a gap in between this and we held some structure support couldn't get back down below this area right here and we held that structure support to move back up so uh, given we have a slight little bit of a gap right over here so I would say right now I don't have too much information on gold we have some resistance coming right at about maybe 54 uh, even but we we'll want to see how that reacts to the markets um, we'll probably look for that to see if we can hold that area but Again, even oil, you're still in a strongest, uh, strongest, uh, strong bull trend. So we may find some support right at about 53.20. And if we find that support right at about 53.20, uh, then we can try to look for some upside rotations right at this area for some support. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to try to look for. Uh, as of right now, got nothing uh, as far as trades on on oil yet. Let's take a look at a four tick so you guys can see too. This is what we're going to probably look around these areas of what we're going to be looking for during the London session. So I want to see if we can actually get an opportunity to do that there. Uh, the Also uh, in this four tick you guys can see we had that gap up too and we're finding some structured support a little bit right at about 53, 54. So I want to see if we can get that structured support there. 
and if we can uh, then we'll try to move higher from there so if we do um, just know we probably may touch 53.94 again but want to see if oil can move back down into the structure support of 53.24 first if we can get that move back down into the structure support of 53.24 then there will be a good opportunity to see some rotations here and then get an opportunity to go to the upside if we can't break that level now if we break below that level then definitely we could see a push back down into our impulse down over here All right so that's kind of what we're looking for as of uh, right now on oil see if we can get something like that let's pull over the Nasdaq for you guys as well so we start reviewing this chart with you all uh, Nasdaq here <clears throat> Nasdaq now we are at a strong level of uh, resistance right now so this is gonna be important because we did gap down well I well and on my charts there's a gap I don't know if other people are missing some information but uh, mine is just missing a little bit of information so on this 10 tick here you guys can see we had some resistance in this area and we gap down found some support at 96.90 or 96.88 and then we pulled the the market all the way back up to this level very important because if we can't break above uh, this area right here we're gonna find some strong resistance there and then push back down All right what we want to see is if we want to go back up we're gonna push through this level here use that as some support and then we're gonna target our upside moves uh, into the resistances above which is probably gonna be somewhere here here and also all the way up over here so that's what we would want to see on an upside movement if we find that resistance rotations and we can't uh, get above this then we'll look for another downside move Let's take a look at a four tick for you guys so you guys can see what that looks like here. Uh, yeah, you guys can see how we filled that gap. We're right at this level. This is going to be a strong opportunity too um, for a, a push back down. So we're going to see if we can get some rotations in this area. If we can get some rotations, this is going to be a great opportunity for a short back down into our support. So again, look something like that there and then find an opportunity to press back down into this level right here. And also if we break that, it's probably going to be somewhere back over here as well. So 96 and then uh, 04 even is going to be our opportunity if we can get that downside uh, rotations there. But again, if we want to see an upside move, we need to break this area here. And then above this, we're going to find that rotations to find the support. And then we'll go ahead and take a long opportunity on the NASDAQ. So we'll see what we get so far, guys. Um, this is what we have on all the markets, NASDAQ, S&P 500 gold and oil so when we come into the London session we'll look to see how we can trade those levels as the market holds the actual structure towards them um, if you guys did like this video go ahead and hit that like button uh, subscribe if you guys have been watching this channel thank you very much if you guys have any questions feel free to contact us at uh, trade pro academy again my uh, email is going to be david at tradeproacademy.com